is Tommy and welcome to another musical adventure. In today's adventure, we're going to go down a little bit of a rabbit hole, but uh, I've been looking at some information and I wanted to share it with you guys because who better to share cool information with than the vinyl community. And so uh, I hope you find this interesting. I find it fascinating. Uh, if not, oh well. But uh I'm really a big fan of and have always kind of been interested in Nudie Khan. Now, a little bit of backstory on Nudie Khan. Nudie Khan was the uh, rodeo outfitter. Uh, he was in Hollywood, and he did all of those flashy suits. I guess probably one of the most famous people to wear nudie suit, or what was called the nudie suit, designed by Nudie Khan, was Porter Wagner. Uh, the rhinestone, you know, embedded sort of flashy suits, very bright, very colorful, and had all these great designs on it. Uh, pretty much all of the cool Western country and Western people were uh, sort of using the, the nudie suit or were famous for wearing the nudie suit. And nudie was an interesting guy. The backstory, he was an immigrant who came over, uh, was working. Uh, I believe he got to start uh, outfitting sort of the G-strings and some of the burlesque shows and, and, and vaudeville shows and worked his way up and became, uh, started putting these rhinestones all over things and sort of built things from there. Now, one of the most famous nudie suits and, and probably one of the first very famous nudie suits or the suits that was designed by uh, Nudie Khan was the gold lame suit worn by Elvis Presley. Uh, sort of was the big famous, recognizable, iconic. Uh, everybody knows the gold lame uh, suit that was designed uh, and that was in the late 50s. And Ellis, of course, was photographed wearing it. And I believe he did a concert, the, uh, the Tupelo uh, homecoming show that he did in Tupelo, Mississippi. He wore, I believe it was the Gold LeMay coat, but he didn't wear the pants. He, I think he wore black pants. It wasn't the full suit. But, um, but that Gold LeMay suit became very famous and iconic with Elvis Presley. Now, through the 60s, like I said, Porter Wagner, George Jones, I believe, had a nudie suit. There were lots of uh, famous musicians that had nudie suits. Now, as you know, one of my very favorite musicians is Michael Nesmith. And Michael Nesmith ordered and had a nudie suit. Now, this is where my story is going to start to um, sort of take shape here. Um, <clears throat> because there's two people, and th this is where this video probably is going to serve a twofold, because we're going to be talking about nudie suits. Or else we talk about the music. Um, you know, Michael Nesmith to me is a pioneer of the country rock genre. I believe that that Nez uh, was definitely one of the early people to do, sort of dive into that sound, marrying country and rock music. Uh, Different drum was a big hit for Linda Ronstra Ronstadt. That whole kind of California country rock sound that the Birds sort of perfected, and and a lot of people started doing. Now, now the Birds. And their perfection of it goes back to the International Submarine Band and Graham Parsons. And Graham Parsons, to me, and Michael Nesmith kind of share a parallel, if you will. Um, now, Graham, unfortunately, died very young. But I always felt like Graham gets sort of all the, the country rock accolades and glory. And, and maybe because he died so young and, and tragically... Uh, and whereas Nesmith, to me, kind of was always dismissed as just that guy in the monkeys. And it's not fair to Nesmith uh, to do that. And so I always kind of take a little bit of a bitter pill with, with Graham Parsons. And I know he's a beloved figure, but like, you know, pound for pound, song for song, I'm usually going to take Nez over Graham Parsons. And that's a personal thing. But uh, Nez is a little more poetic. He's certainly, to me, a better singer than Graham. But I get Graham, and I love the Burrito Brothers, and I love uh, Graham's solo stuff. But uh, and he's got some really heartbreakingly beautiful, beautiful music. And so I'm I'm not trying to take anything away from Graham. I just feel like Graham steals a lot of the thunder from Nez. And you know, at the end of the day, you know, Nez has lived to be a nice old man and has seen his legacy kind of come around, whereas Graham never did. So. I guess when it gets all said and done, the, the, the winner in all this is probably going to be Nesmith. Uh, but having said that, Graham Parsons also had a nudie suit. Now there's a famous story uh, where when the first national band, uh, Nez's uh, solo band, his first solo band, was playing at the Palomino, Graham and the Burrito Brothers were sort of offstage laughing 
uh, at them. And, and the implication was that, you know, Nez was a monkey and he couldn't be taken seriously. And uh, they were kind of openly making fun of them. Now, this is a story that was shared by John Ware, who was the drummer for the uh, First National Band, playing with Nez, really believed in what was going on there. And John Ware went on to play with Emmylou Harris in the Hot Band. Uh, so he kind of had a connection, and he said he was pretty angry about it because he could tell they were just sort of openly laughing at him. Now, he didn't name names. I don't think he said Graham in particular. He didn't say, uh, you know, if it, which members of the burritos that were doing it. It kind of doesn't matter. Uh, I could kind of see Graham Parsons doing that. From everything I know about Graham Parsons, he was a bit of a, he came, a trust fund kid, kind of didn't care, was kind of flippant about his attitude toward music. Uh, even Chris Hillman tells, tells the story that when the burritos were kind of trying to get themselves going as a band, Graham was just kind of blowing things off, showing up late for gigs, and just not being a very good boy. Uh, is being very naughty. However, Graham Parsons' nudie suit is an iconic image. Uh, I believe it is in the Country Music Hall of Fame in Nashville on display. It has the uh, marijuana leaves and the pills and the cross on the back of it. Uh, and it is an iconic nudie suit pictured on the front cover of the Gilded Palace of Sin by the Flying Burrito Brothers. Now there is also, and this is where we're kind of going to get into my little discovery here, uh, I was looking at uh, some photos of Graham Parsons and was looking at the nudie suit and just sort of admiring it. And I noticed a photo of Graham Parsons wearing a cowboy hat. And um, this cowboy hat looked very familiar to me. And then I went back and looked at Nez in his nudie suit and I noticed the hat was the same. Now, Nez still has his nudie suit and cowboy hat, and I have confirmed with someone that, that he recently tried to try on the suit, and it didn't quite fit. But uh, some of the recent First National Band tours, Nez comes out wearing the, 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 the hat that came with the suit, and he sets it up, and he, he uh, you know stays on the stage. And he's been photographed recently, even very recently, on his website wearing this hat. And I started thinking about Graham Parsons wearing the hat. Now, obviously... Nez's suit, in my opinion, the hat matches the suit because Nez's suit has the uh, stars on it. On the back, it's got the American flag. Certainly, the, the stars on Nez's hat uh, would match the suit that goes along with it. Now, having said that, uh, at the same time, the photo of Graham wearing the hat in, mm -hmm. in Graham's suit, clearly not the same. Now, this is where I'm going with this, uh, and so follow along with me, if you will is that that photo of Graham Parsons wearing the hat, there's only like a couple of those photos in existence. Now, I started looking a little more closely at those photos and realizing that the hat probably doesn't go with the suit, plus the fact that I think nudie, nudie suits were unique. They were unique to whoever had those suits. I don't think he had multiple versions of those out there. Uh, so it would seem to me there'd be only one of those hats in existence. And Graham was never photographed wearing that hat outside of that one photo session. And I started putting the photo session together, and that Graham's photo was taken at Nudie Studio. There's a great photo of Graham standing there wearing his suit, shirtless, uh, with, the, with the jacket open, with Nudie Cone. Um, and so my thinking is that they were in Nudie Studio, Nez's Nudie suit was on order, Nudie was working on it, the hat was sitting there, Graham threw it on for a couple of photos. I don't think he probably realized whose hat it was, um, you know, or anything like that. Now, I'm trying to date it. I don't know when the, the, the photo of Graham at Nudie's studio was taken. I'm almost certain that the photo of Graham wearing the hat was taken at the same time that uh, he was taken with Graham standing there with Nudie. Because it, it looks to me, and if you look at the photo, Graham is kind of sitting on the floor wearing the hat with the stars on it. And you can see kind of around him some of the clothes that are on the racks. And if you look even closer, closely, behind Graham is, it uh, looks like Nudie, because Nudie's wearing a green suit as he's sitting in a chair. Um, and so I believe that's Nudie actually in the photo. He's just cropped out because it's just focused on Graham. And so... I believe Graham saw the hat in the studio and just kind of threw it on for a couple of photos, and that was that. But I'm very certain that the Graham Parsons nudie cowboy hat 
is the hat that belongs to Michael Nesmith. Uh, I'm sure Nez is probably completely unaware of any of this because he's usually unaware of these kinds of things. But um, dating the photo, I will say that the Guild of Palace of Sin came out in 69. When the photo cover photo was taken, not really certain, but it would make sense that Graham had his suit definitely by then. Uh, Nez, he wore, I believe the first time he wore the nudie suit would have been at the head movie premiere, uh, the Monkey's movie head. He wore the nudie suit to the premiere of that. And he also wore it again in the 33 and a third special, television special that came out in early 69. So it would make sense that maybe Nez's suit was still being worked on when Graham was picking his suit up and had those photos taken, however that works. That's what I'm thinking. Now, I mentioned this on a Nesmith discussion group on the internet, and something else was pointed out to me that another famous person wearing this hat, and it is Elton John. Now, I have no idea when the Elton John photo would have been taken. I find it very hard to believe that Elton John wearing a nudie suit would have been taken in 68, 69, around when I think Graham Parsons and the Nez thing happened. So maybe there were multiple hats. I can't date the Elton John photo. So that's why I'm reaching out to you. So it's a sort of a kickoff of a discussion. Nesmith versus Graham. The hat, which I just found kind of intriguing. I, I'm convinced that Nez's hat is the same one that Graham's wearing. But you guys who are way smarter than me, maybe dig a little deeper, can tell me something otherwise. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. Like the video if you're so inclined. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Uh, love to have you along for the ride. Also try to reply to each and every comment. So if you do take time to leave a comment, I usually will respond. I try to. And if I don't, I'm sorry. Um, but uh, it's good to see you all. In the meantime, save the Texas Prairie Chicken.